Okay, folks, for this screencast, we're going to do uh, an RK4 system uh, again, but we're going to do a, a four-dimensional system. I got an email from uh, Shanks LaRoe about uh, doing a multiple codependent ODEs using fourth order Runakuta. And so uh, he actually emailed me a, a PDF here um, with uh, some coupled ODEs. If you see here, you've got P1, or actually, you have to rearrange the equation, so you get you know, d theta d1 dt, d theta d2 dt, and they're all coupled in here. It gets very complex. You can rearrange the equations and, and get this guy here. And so basically we're going to code this in, um, in MATLAB. And so um, let's go back to, to MATLAB here. Let's open this up. So the, the, the first thing you want to do, which is totally independent of the system that you're trying to uh, simulate, is, is just get all the... Uh, beginning channels in. So I just like clear CLC close all at the top uh, just because um, you want to go ahead and get your um, I'm going to call it theta vec and so by the way I think uh, Shanks was saying that this is a uh, temperature of an engine in uh, in four different parts and I'll hope more than likely he'll comment and say if this is right or not. So um, we're going to do zeros for length of time and so uh, we need to make time, and so we're going to say lin space. Let's do uh, a time step. We'll do, I don't know, how long does an engine run? Let's just say, let's just say 100 seconds. 100 seconds, time step, and we'll make our time step. For now, I'll make it 0 0.1. We'll change that um, and, and see what we have. I don't know what the uh, eigenvalues of this system are, so uh, I, can't, I don't actually know what the time step needs to be. But so you got all your bells and whistles, so now you need to set initial conditions. And so I'm going to set theta vec of all comma one equal to uh, theta one not theta, theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four, and then theta one, and this is where that PDF comes in. So theta one, the initial condition, so all of the t initial temperatures are the same, 19.5. I'm guessing that's, um, uh, I don't know, if I had to guess that's Celsius. It's, probably Celsius. Uh, so we got theta 3 is 19.5, theta 4 is 19.5, and so now you can do your uh, RK4 loop. So you got 4, IDX is 1 to length of time. And so now for coupled ODEs like this, this is what I like to do. I like saying K1 is equal to derivatives of uh, theta vec all comma, all comma idx like this so derivatives is going to be a function that we're going to write later that is essentially going to compute the derivatives at the current value and so then you just do your stereotypical um, function call here so idx plus uh, what is it k1 over times time step over 2 and then K3 is derivatives, theta vec, all comma idx. By the way, I'll post a link to my original RK4 video. Um, so if you want to know where these equations come from, I'll, I'll post a link up here for you to take a look at. Um, but since I already did that video, I'm going to go ahead and just post it, or just write it out without any uh, sort of explanation. Uh, plus K3, and then this is a full time step forward. I'm going to assume the time is not explicit in the function, but you could easily put a time uh, input variable here. And then finally, you've got your um, k r k four, which is going to be uh, one sixth times k one plus two times k two plus two times k three plus k four, and then your um, your theta vec of all comma idx plus one equals theta vec of all comma idx plus k r k four. I guess I should probably make this consistent, make this a capital K times time step. And so it looks like because I put an idx plus one here, I actually have to go to length of time minus one. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make a figure and uh, we will uh, X label time, we will Y label temperature, temperature, again, I think this is in Celsius, and then we'll plot time comma theta vec, and hopefully we should get four lines. 
Okay, so this is the, uh, the the kernel of the RK4. Here's the loop here, and so this should all look familiar if you watch my previous video. And so now the question is, how do you get this derivatives function? So I'm gonna click this button up here. If you have a different version of MATLAB, things will be different, but if you click this button, you get two windows here, and then you can click new. And uh, at this point, you have two functions in here. So I'm gonna make a functions uh, d theta dot, uh, sorry, d, d theta t dot d theta dt, that's what I want to do, equals, and I'm going to call this derivatives, and the input is just theta um, vec, okay? And so what I could do is I could say theta 1 is theta vec of 1, theta 2 is theta vec of 2, theta 3, uh, I'm just, I'm going to comment these out, um, et cetera, et cetera, but since, uh, Shanks was uh, gracious enough to put this in matrix form. It turns out um, you can actually just code this in verbatim uh, how he has it. So I'm going to hit this X here so I can see just the derivatives function and then I'm going to go back to here. So basically all I have to do is say d theta d dt equals inverse of c times p1, p2, p3, p4 plus theta a times g 4a plus or minus inverse of c times and I'm gonna call it I'm gonna make this matrix g mat because that looks pretty complex and so now what we need to do is we need to type everything in so p1 is if you want you can fast forward through this part p1 is 69 p2 is 69 p3 is 69 uh, let's see p4 is 155 uh, G4A is 2.38. Uh, maybe I'll just hear you. I'll just pause this. Okay, folks, we're back. Uh, that took a long time to type all it in, but basically I've got all my P variables 1 through 4. I've got, I probably need to put this in the same spot, put this guy down here. And this guy maybe is coupled with uh, this guy. Uh, I've got all my C variables here, C1 through 4. I've got G's, all of my G's in here. Um, I've got my matrix C uh, here. I use the diag function to get C1 through 4. I've got theta A. I've got G112233, which is just summation of both. I, again, if you're wondering, what these equations all came from this uh, spreadsheet that uh, Shanks Leroux gave me. Um, and then I make my GMAT matrix. So I got G11, all of this stuff here. Um, and then again, because this is in the matrix form, I've got d theta dt equals inverse of c times this matrix of p's minus c inverse g matrix times theta vec. And so I've got inverse c, and uh, to be um, cons consistent here, we should do c mat, uh, c mat, g mat theta vec, and this should be uh, d theta dt of vec, and that way we know this is a vec, and then we gotta make this vec as well. Okay, so if we did this right, um, and, and I always like to just, you know, fly by the seat of my pants and, and just see if this worked and just run it, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, output, uh, what, IDX times length of time over, no, how, do, how do I do this? Uh, I want IDX over length of time times 100. Okay, and then that'll give me a number between uh, 0 and 100. So when this number gets to 100, the simulation is done. Okay, so that simulation was really fast. And so it looks like we only have two plots on here. Um, more than likely, two of them are on top of each other. So here, what we can do is we can just plot uh, 1 comma all like this. And this will just be uh, temperature. I'm going to do slash theta 1 like that. And so there's our uh, our first temperature. Um, let's see. It looks like it doesn't like the uh, the labels before. There we go. Time temperature theta one. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this. And actually, here I'm gonna do something fancy. Four JDX equals one to four, and just change this to JDX. And now I should get four plots. Okay, cool. Oh, but I can't do theta one here. Blast. So I'm just gonna do theta. I'm going to do an eval command. I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. None to string JDX. 
All right, that was totally unnecessary, but really cool. Okay, anyway, so here is, yeah, theta one, theta two, theta one, theta two, theta three, and theta four. And unfortunately, at this point, I don't know if this is right. Um, we could lower the time step and see if we get something drastically different. Um, it looks like we're getting about the same. Um, the maximum temperature, theta A is 100, something was 155. You see, I don't know what these P's are, so I don't really know if this is right. I mean, I guess we could simulate for, say, a thousand seconds. Go for gold here. This is going to take a while. Um, here, I'll, I'll pause it again so you don't have to watch this. Okay, we're back. So, yeah, ba basically, that this is what's happening. All, all of the temperatures are essentially rising to, well, I don't know. Theta 1 went to 200. Theta 2 went to 200. Theta... Three went to 200, but theta four went to 171. And so maybe Shanks will post in the comments uh, below here and uh, explain something about the uh, the results. But assuming I put everything in correctly, um, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna um, scroll through the code here so that we just do a little recap. So we got clear CLC, close all. We got our time step and time and our, our theta vec. We've got our initial conditions. We've got our standard RK4 loop with the derivatives function. Then we've got a, a fancy for loop to plot uh, four variables. Then we have our derivatives function itself. The input is theta vec, the output is d theta dt vec. Um, I did explain that you could pull out each variable like this if you wanted to, but since it was already in matrix form, I elected to just do this guy. Um, and then I made a GMAT matrix. I made all of my parameters uh, for this. And so it, it gets kind of uh, cumbersome with all the, this many variables, but you know some some play, some systems are just uh, complex like that. But this essentially should allow you to do any system uh, whatsoever. I mean, I've coded you know f 150 state systems uh, using the exact same uh, input output uh, derivatives function, and so you should be good to go. All right, good luck.